Welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I want to show us how to verify a data hash value in Windows operating system, harnessing the Windows PowerShell tool. Hashing is a one-way function, meaning that it is irreversible once it's done. No two distinct files can have the same hash value. Because of the power of hashing, security professionals harness it to check the integrity of data to be sure that the data is not changed while on transit or at rest. To verify a hash value, let's start by adding to the search tab and search for PowerShell. So here we have Windows PowerShell. All we need to do is click to open it or we press the enter key. The next thing that we need to do is locate the file that we want to verify the hash value. So I have a file that I've downloaded already and it's a MySQL MSI installer from this website. This is the official website of MySQL. Before you download a file to use on your system or in your organization, always make sure that you obtain the file from the vendor, the owner of that file or program. I have downloaded this already, but if you intend to use this file, if you intend to use it, go ahead to click on download. And once this page pop up, you can optionally log in if you have an Oracle account or you click on no thanks, just start my download and it will download the file immediately for you. And if we look at this MSI installer, we can see that it have a hash value, which starts with 7A26 and ends with 9718. So this is the hash value, the pre-computed hash value that is given to us by the owner of this program, the builders, the developers, and um, I want to be sure that the file has not been altered. So like I said earlier, if you are using a public network or uh, you are you know, getting a copy of a file that has been hashed for, you know, to maintain the integrity of that file, it's always important to verify. So we also have the signature. The signature is another uh, tool that you can use to check the integrity of this file. But the signature, to verify the signature of the file is slightly different. So uh, both are essential in ensuring the integrity of a file. I have my SQL downloaded already. So here it is. The thing is that you must not alter anything on this file, including the file name. So the file must be the way it is. Any alteration you make on this file will change the hash value of this file. So you must ensure that it is exact way that it came. Another thing is to ensure that you can access the extension of this file because when we are verifying the integrity of this file, we need the extension. It's not just the file name, but the extension. So here we can see that the extension is .msi the last three characters that we have here separated by this dot is the extension. So if you can't see the extension on your own system, all you need to do is click on view, you go to show, and then file name extensions like so. So I just unchecked mine and the extension is gone. So if I go back to toggle there, it will bring back the file name extension. So if you are using Windows 10, it's common to once the extension is enabled and you have the pre-computed hash value, of course, we have us here on the website. The next thing is head over to your PowerShell and migrate to the location where the file is. So if we look at the current location on our PowerShell, it is the C drive, the users, and then the brights folder. So I want to migrate to the folder where I have the MySQL installer. So for me to be able to 
navigate between the two windows. I want to dock this window like so. If you're on Windows 10, you can use the Windows button. You hold down the Windows key and then you use the left arrow key to position your window the way you want. So once that is done, you can always adjust it the way you intend to adjust. So I want to leave it this way so that we can see um, the terminal very well. I want to also go to properties and increase the font size uh, to 18 so that it can be uh, bigger for us to see. Maybe I should make it um, font. Maybe I should make it 20 like so. I think it's wider than it was. And I will drag this in like so. I will also adjust my navigation pane. So I want us to see just these uh, files. So that's done. So I want to click on the address bar. I want to copy the address to this folder. So for me to be able to do that, um, I will have to click here or maximize first and then click the address bar and copy the address like so. and minimize it back. So that's done. I need to come to our PowerShell and do CD, which stands for change directory is a command. It must be typed in small letters. And then I open quotation, do control V to paste and press enter to change to this very directory. So if I do LS uh, pipe, then I do uh, format list. Like so, I should be able to see the two folders, uh, the two files that I have here. So this is the first file and this is the second file. So I'm going to go ahead to clear. Uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to now get the hash value of this MySQL um, MSI installer. So all I need to do is type get the G must be in capital letter. It has to be like so. Get file hash. Then I specify the name. So I want to right click. Because the extension is there, I should be able to copy the file name, including the extension. So I've just copied it. And then I paste the file here and say, dash a dash a is to specify the algorithm the algorithm and the algorithm that i'm using is md5 so if we go to this website this mysql official website we can see md5 written here which means that the algorithm that was used to generate this hash value is md5 algorithm so I've specified MD5 like so if I press enter, it should be able to generate the hash value for me. So I don't like it formatted this way. So I want to go back to run this command. All you need to do is just press the um, arrow key, the top arrow key, and then pass in the pipe character and do format, then list like so. And it should be able to show us the algorithm is MD5. The hash value is 7A, 7A26. And then we have the last four characters or digits being 9718. So if we go to our 
website again, the official uh, website of MySQL, we can see we have 7826 and here we have uh, 9718. So we can see that it's genuine, but what if, you know, because the character is long and depending, they may choose to use um, SHA, maybe SHA, uh, 256 um, SHA um, 834. So, depending if they are using such algorithm, the character should be very long and the first four digits could match, but you know what is inside might not. So, in such scenario, you would like to verify you know the hash value. You want the system to compute it, the new one, and, and, and match with the one that they presented you with the pre-computed hash value. So in that scenario, if we want the system to match it for us, what we need to do is assign this command to a variable here. So what I want to do now is assign a variable called file hash. File hash, and I want to say that file hash equal Get file hash. Get file hash like so. And then I'm going to paste the file name. Since we are working in this directory, the hash verification directory. So I'm going to paste. There is no need specifying a full file path because we are already working in that directory. So I'm going to specify my algorithm like so dash a and then i say md5 and press enter so it has been assigned to this variable the next command that i need to do is assign the pre-computed hash value to a variable also so you can give it any variable name so i'm going to say file hash pre-computed like so and I want to say that is equal this file hash that we have here so I'm going to go ahead to copy everything that is here take it to PowerShell paste it there and press enter like so another command that I need to run I think at this point I can maximize the window so that we can see everything. Another command that I need to run is pick the first one. Take note, the file hash, the one that we ran the script, get file hash, you no. Know? So we have to pick that variable. We now say file hash dot hash. So if we look at this parameter, we can see that we have hash as a parameter being, you know, the hash value, we have path, we also have algorithm. So if I want to pick path, I need to come and say dot path like so. So, but I need the hash, so I have to say dot hash like so to pick the hash and then pass in this script EQ to check if it is equal this pre-computed file hash. So I'm now going to go ahead to say dollar file hash pre-computed and press enter like so. So we can see that what it returns is true, showing that it has match. If it doesn't match, it's going to show false. Now let's bring a different hash value. So I'm going to go back to that pre-computed hash value. I just press my top arrow key and then I want to change this to 4 and then press enter. Then go back to that command that we did. The file hash dot hash dash eq dollar file hash pre-computed. Then I'm going to press enter. Take note that I'm using snake case here uh, to name my variable. So we can see that what it returns is false. It doesn't match. So in a scenario where you get false, it shows that the hash value does not match. 
with the pre-computed hash value. So in this case, it should true because it matches. Now, another scenario is having multiple files to verify. If you have multiple files to verify, all you need to do is write an if statement. You just need to learn um, Windows PowerShell commands. Write an if statement, store your variables, um, the file name, the pre-computed hash value in a in a in a variable in in form of an array and then you use a for loop or any form of loop and you know traverse through the array and and compute your hash value uh to see uh, the one that matches and the one that does not but uh, i think what you may mostly need depending on your need is um uh, this way, uh, which you can, you know, verify a single hash value on the terminal. Thank you very much. This is how to simply verify uh, your hash value in Windows operating system using Windows PowerShell. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to this channel to inspire me to continue making videos like this. Thank you.